All right, guys, welcome to the module number 14 of the Facebook marketing course. And today's topic is generating leads. So today's goal is find more leads with Facebook to grow your business. So we start with why lead building. So how lead generation has evolved. So then a few we go to the few elements that need to be set that need to be established before we actually start the process of lead generation. Then the campaign objective that we can use for lead generation, targeting the right audiences. So core audiences, custom audiences and lookalike audiences, the right type of placement and formats for this particular types of advertisements, the budgeting and scheduling, the right type of creatives, right? The right type of placements and then the how to optimize the results. So what parameters do we watch out for as far as lead ads are concerned? Yeah. And then measurement. So how can we optimize our results? Cool. So let's get started right away. So now let's try to understand how lead generation has evolved over the last few years. So, you know, typically we are used to, you know, traditional uh, lead generation methods. So it could, you know, it could be something as, as simple as a booth that you have at an exhibition or at a mall where you request people to give in their information. But now things have changed. All right. Now, we do not need to depend on these mechanisms to develop to generate leads. So we don't need to uh, uh, depend on you know events or flyers or booths, etc. Yeah, now we can go digital and we can actually get these leads on on platforms like Facebook and Instagram. Like we all know, you know, people spend a lot of time on on mobile and Insta on Facebook and Instagram. So one in every five minutes spent on mobile is either on Facebook or Instagram. So you can see that you know, this is like 20% of the total time, which is a huge chunk of, of time. So if people are spending a lot of time on Facebook and Instagram, those two platforms can be a great, they can be leveraged to generate leads quite effectively. So just to show you all how this whole process works. So, you know, this is a typical lead ad that you see on Facebook. Okay. And then let's see how it actually works. So when the user clicks on subscribe, a form opens. So like you just saw, a user clicked on the ad, a form opened, the user selected a few options and the user then you know, gave the details you know, your typical is the name, email ID or phone number. And when the user clicks on submit, those details are sent to the brand or the business. All right. Uh, in this case, the objective was to, you know, get uh, to get the user subscribed to the newsletter by Jasper's market. So this is how a typical lead ad works. The user clicks on it, selects a few options, gives the relevant information, clicks on submit, and that is it. As you can see, the user does not have to go anywhere else. The user does not have to leave Facebook in order to give this information. So now just a few prerequisites. What are the few elements that you need to set up before the lead generation advertising campaign can begin? So your Facebook page should have a vanity URL. Then the page information should be completed. So there should be all the, all the relevant information should be up updated in the page. The call to action on button on the page should be activated with the proper call to action. And then you should also think about, you know, what questions do you want to ask on your form? So this totally depends on what you are trying to do. Yeah. And then if you have any privacy policies or terms and conditions, because they are also necessary for lead ads. So like always, you know, if you're, if you're an existing advertiser, you can see the ads manager or the AdWords manager. Yeah. Or you can click on the, on the drop down, which is available on the top right corner, and you can access the ad manager from there as well. Yeah, so and if, if you are an already existing AdWords manager, when you land on the on your manager page, you can just click on create AdWords because the, the process of ad creation actually starts from that particular button. Now, when you click on create ad, you know, these are the options that appear. Right. So we have already studied these options. We already know how to land on this page, right? There is awareness, there is consideration and conversion. 
and in uh, in consideration if you see at the, at the bottom most uh, this uh, section there is lead generation so that is the objective that we can use to generate leads so which campaign objective to use for lead generation like we discussed the lead generation objective helps us to collect leads so on targeting all right so we have already looked at this but still we will be looking at this again so you can consider this as a kind of a revision so there are there are primarily three ways you know of, of targeting core audience custom audience and lookalike audience so let's try to understand them now so core audiences is what you know reaching the right demographics custom audiences is if, if you want to reach existing customers again so if you have a set of customers with whom you have interacted in the past that that becomes your those become your custom audiences and the third is look alike audiences so you can expand your custom audiences and find more people like your existing custom audiences through look alike audiences all right so what is core audiences core audiences is finding people based on demographics location interests and behaviors right so now facebook has its own data right and it also has a few partner categories and by by using by combining these two sources you know facebook has information uh, uh, in terms of interest location demographics and behaviors about all the users all right so let's say you know if you want to take sample segments so facebook for example knows which people or which users are interested in gaming which people live in singapore so even location targeting is available then you know demographics so which people are newly engaged then which behavior so which people you know use android phones which people use uh, apple phones facebook knows all of this data and then which are the premium brand buyers so you can have these selection filters in order to reach out to the right type of people so that your lead ads will be shown to only those people so like we discussed facebook targeting options are very very diverse you know demographics so you can target people based on the life events let's say you know people who have gotten married or uh, based on the school graduation or based on their education level relationship status and more then interests you know facebook monitors all the activity that users do and depending on that it categorizes the users into different buckets of interest so you can target people based on their interests such as you know fitness wellness shopping fashion business and industry and more then behaviors so based on the user behaviors online so let's say you know people who love to travel or people who are expats or based on the purchase behaviors then location you can target specific locations you can target countries you can target states you can target cities you can target specific areas in a city all right and then connection so people who have liked your page or people who have not liked your page or people who have who have joined your event etc so that's what core audiences includes so in the dashboard as we know there is a location so the, there is a location filter age filter gender languages and below it there is retail targeting which has demographics interests behaviors and more categories all right so now i'll just go to the dashboard and and show you how to select the lead generation objective and how to access these targeting features so this is the facebook ads manager so I'll click on lead generation I'll give a name for my campaign so like we discussed we can target people based on the location right and then age gender languages and then detailed targeting which basically has what which basically has demographics interest behaviors and more categories and then obviously we have the connection based targeting right so these are a few ways in which you can target a core audience now what is custom audiences custom audiences are the people that you already know so you have your own data right so let's say the crm data that you have which is probably a list of email ids right and the same users can be present on facebook so custom audiences is basically an overlap of these two users so the people that that have interacted with your brand in the past and the same people when they are present on facebook the overlap between two, these two categories basically becomes your custom audience that's what custom audiences is now the difference between core audience and the custom audience is that custom audiences basically 
have already you know they have actually engaged with your brand previously they have already interacted with your brand and hence they know hence you're not meeting them for the first time it's the, it's like they already know about you right so that's the difference between the two okay so custom audiences now custom audiences can be can be created in four ways okay in this case uh, you know only three are applicable because the third one like you see is for applications all right but for lead generation you know you have customer file so you can basically create a custom audiences based on the email ids that you have so let's say you know your company has or your business has 10000 email ids so when you when you input that when you submit that excel sheet to facebook which has 10000 email ids of people then your ad will be shown to only those 10000 people which exist on facebook by using the same email id so if you see, it's a really targeted way of of reaching out to people because only the people whose email ids are present in the database will be shown the ad right the second way to create custom audiences is website traffic so you can reach out to people who have already visited your website or any specific pages in the website and the third is basically people who which which have engaged with you on facebook already so you know people which which have let's say you know uh, seen your video or people with uh, which have you know engaged with your posts or engaged with your lead ads etc so that is what engagement on facebook is so these are the three ways in which custom audiences can be generated so now what is look alike audiences now look alike audiences is, is basically you know creating so when you have let's say you create a custom audience set of of let's say 10000 email ids like we discussed but now you feel the need to go beyond them you need to go beyond those 10000 people but you want to show your ad to people which are similar to those 10000 people right so what do you do you create a look alike audience so what is look alike audience look alike audience is just a, just like an extension of the existing audience basically facebook observes the traits of a, it observes the different qualities of the existing audience and then creates a new set of audience which has the same qualities as the existing custom audience so your the, the ad reaches out to the people who have in a similar interest or let's say similar behavior and hence there is more chance of success all right so the what are the sources of creating look alike audiences people who have liked your page or people who have visited the purchase information page right so you know website visitors people who have seen the video they have interacted with your canvas ad or with your lead ad all right so look alike audiences can be created you know by going into the audience section of the manager so i'll just now go to the dashboard and tell you how to create custom audiences and look alike audiences so when you land on the ads manager you know if you just click on audiences when you go to click create audiences you can either create custom audience so like we discussed there are four ways of creating custom audience you can use these one of these uh, ways to create one and then you can also create a look alike audience so you can select a source so let's say you know this is a uh, this is an already existing custom audience which i have selected and now i'm let's say i'm putting the location as india all right so now custom audiences will be created based on this already existing audience so this is what look alike audience will is is known as okay look alike audiences is what just an extension of the custom audiences which enables you to reach out to wider set of people which are similar to these set of custom audiences okay now let's look at the placement so you know what are the right placements and format for this particular type of advertisement so yes you know you have automatic placements which is a recommended option where you can you know where you let facebook you know to optimize the campaign so facebook will show the ad where it is likely to perform the best otherwise you can go with edit placements now in edit placements for for lead generation there are basically only uh, that there is only facebook news feed and instagram news feed that is available all right so you can show your ads on these two placements so i'll just show you on the dashboard as well so on the dashboard as you can see you know facebook you have only the feeds option where you can show the ads and then you also have Instagram feeds. So now let's look at the budget and schedule. So setting budgets, schedule and other advanced options. So obviously daily budget or lifetime budget. So these are the two options that, that you can set. You know, daily budget uh, has an upper edge because daily budget basically gives you an opportunity of uh, 
uh, you know, uh, having an upper cap on what you spend uh, for the day. Lifetime budget, on the other hand, has a different advantage. It, lifetime budget basically helps you uh, select different slots, you know, where you can show your ads. Whereas daily budget does not allow you to do that. Daily budget basically means that you have to show your ad throughout the day. But if you go with lifetime, you can select specific slots. Okay, that's, that's the difference between the two. Then use the default optimization for ad deliver for best results. All right, so now you can optimize your ads, your lead ads for you know different objectives, right? So now what are those different objectives? Let us go to the dashboard and see. So the optimization can happen for leads and it can have also happen for link clicks. Now in this case, leads is recommended, all right? Now what does optimization mean? Optimization basically means that out of the objectives that you choose, your ad will be optimized for that particular objective, which means that Facebook will try its best to get the recommended objective. So if you go with leads, Facebook will try its best to give you leads. If you go with link clicks, your ads will be optimized for link clicks. In this case, leads is the recommended option because the whole purpose of this campaign is to anyway generate leads for the leads for our business. Then creatives, the right, you know, the, what kind of right creatives we can use to have a maximum impact. So, you know, we know that there are these, these formats available. There is a carousel format, which is like a multiple card format. You can have multiple images. Yeah, multiple text on, on every image. Then you have the single image ads, where there is a single image used in the ad. You have a video ad, where you can use a video for your advertisement. And you also have slideshow. So slideshow is what? A series of images being played one after the other. So you can use all of these for the lead generation objective. So you can use carousel ads to show variety. So we have touched on the, on the benefits of carousel ads already. So you know carousel ads basically because there are multiple boxes that you can see or multiple cards as you can see, you can use multiple creatives, you know, you can use multiple text there and all of those things. So there are, you know, you can build a story if you want. Uh, you can you know build a story from the first creative or the first box till the last box or you can use a panoramic effect so you can do a lot you can showcase a lot of uh, creativity by using this so carousel ads can be can be used for that then you have single image ads which you know which help you uh, impact uh, the user you know through a through a good creative or by having a good visual you can you can actually have a visual impact on on the on the user Single image as ads as the name suggests, they have only have one single image in them. Video ads are like, you know, videos, you know, as the name suggests. So these are the ads which have a video and video have their own strengths. As we all know, people tend to connect well with a video ad. So uh, that is, that is one format to consider. And the last is a slideshow. So slideshow format, you know, is a, is a sequence of images being played one after the other. Yeah, it, it's a lighter format as compared to video. So people, you know, with, with, which do not have access to high internet or when you are concerned about the bandwidth of the user, you can go with the slideshow because it is a lighter format as compared to the video format. So now lead ads are, you know, need lead forms, right? So what are these lead forms? So basically to connect in, to collect information, you need to have a lead form. So when the user clicks on the ad, this particular form opens and the necessary information is, is taken. That's why we also design to need, you also need to design these lead forms. So when you are creating the ad, you have the option of, you know, creating a lead form, right? So when you click on create lead form, you can either create a new form or you can du duplicate an existing form. So if you've already created one lead form before, you can use that or you can create a new lead form. Both the options are available. Now, when you create a new, you know, lead form, so you start with, you know, naming, naming what your form is, is for, right? So give a particular name for that part for that form. Yeah. Then, uh, you, you, you have the option of adding a optional context card. So like, as I said, it's, it's optional. You don't need to add it, but if you add it, you know, people will see this particular card before they fill up the, fill up the information. All right. So, you know, your ad will give you a certain space to express yourself. But if you want to express more, you know, if you want to convince people more before they actually fill up the lead, you know, you can use this context card. So basically, you know, you can, you can, you will have another opportunity of reaching out to them through a creative, as you can see, or through a few bullet points, as you can see. So a context card is like a landing page for your form. 
people will see it before they before they fill your form before they see your form right so use it if you have any special benefits or offers to highlight or more information to explain before someone fills out your form so this is one more opportunity for you to interact with the user with with good content and just try to encourage the user to fill up the form and give the necessary details to the to the business so now then you can select you know which information you want to capture so do you want to capture the name email ids etc then you can also you know have open ended questions like 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 you can see bef uh, below that so that that's an open ended question there is no there is no optional answer there is no option you have to write your own answer right so you can you can select these fields all right and then you can if you have a you know link to your privacy policy or terms you know and conditions you, know, you can link that so that the users can uh, you know just just take take a look at that uh, privacy policy before they actually fill up the form and you can also add an additional you know option of redirecting people to your website so you can also you know include a link of your website so that when they are done filling up the form they can choose to visit your website so all of these options are available in the lead form i'll you know i'll encourage you all or i'll invite you all to explore all of these options on your particular ad dashboards and create a lead form and then obviously before any, any ad is made live it's a good practice to review it so review the form and take it live so we are good to go when when this form is all set up now a few best practices a few tips through which you can enhance these campaigns so firstly highlight the value proposition right so what is value proposition in this case basically why should a user share his or her information with you what is the benefit for the user highlight that because only then will they be encouraged to share the information another way in which you can attract users is by including coupons or any other incentives for for them to share their information with you right then provide more context than you normally would given that you are requesting immediate action so you know it's it's good to provide more context you also have the additional you know context card through which you can provide additional con uh, context to why you are seeking the information right because you are you are requesting immediate action from them anyway so it's good to give them more context then ask only the information that you really need okay and this is this is a battle because we are all tempted to have maximum information so you know we we are we might be tempted to ask them for a lot of fields or we might you know include a lot of fields in our in our form while that is you know is very tempting it's it's not always a great idea because the user might lose interest in filling up the form if the fields are too many if it seems you know very very intimidating so ask only the necessary information later on obviously you can you know use that information to get more information but for now it's a good thing to not push too much consider keeping a free form text input to a minimum as this increases the friction in form filling right so keep that free form text input to a minimum yeah for questions where the user has to select multiple options do not confuse the users with you know six or seven or eight options keep the options limited to only three or four so how do you retrieve these leads so when you go to the publishing tools okay when you click on the publishing tools to the left you will see the lead adwords form right so this is where the forms actually sorry this is where the leads are actually stored all right so when you when you go to this section you can download depending on the form name that you have given you know there will be different uh, different uh, you know forms that will be displayed here and the one that that is of interest to you you can download that and you will see in an excel sheet all the leads in in one place okay now what kind of parameters do you measure right so how do you monitor and improve the performance of your campaigns for lead generation so results so how many leads are collected obviously is a very very important parameter because that defines i mean that defines the success or the failure of the campaign how many leads could be achieved and obviously also the cost per lead so you know how, what is the cost that we are incurring per per lead so you know these are the other two two main parameters to look out for so now let's just you know review what we have done so far so we started with the evolution so what were the what were the mechanisms of generating leads previously and what are the mechanisms now so because people spend a lot of time on facebook it can be a really effective medium of of creating leads of generating leads 
then we looked at a few prerequisites so before we start what are the things that we need to take care of before we can actually roll out delete ad campaigns so you know things like uh, uh, setting up the page properly, filling up the right information, etc. Then we looked at the objective, which enables to generate leads, which is the lead generation objective. Then we looked at the targeting, that the different types in which the different the different types of targeting, namely the core audiences, the audience network, and the lookalike audiences. We looked at the different placements. So, like we saw, you know, Facebook newsfeed and Instagram newsfeed are the two placements available for this kind of uh, for this kind of an ad. Then we looked at the format of creatives. So yeah, we can use different formats like the carousel ads, the single image ad, the slideshow ad and the video ad. Yeah, then we looked at creation of lead form. So the form which appears when the user clicks on the ad, the form which captures the information. And then we looked at the measurement. So what kind of parameters do we need to measure to in order to just see if the campaign is doing well or not? This was all for today. So you can continue learning with online Facebook Blueprint course as always. Thank you.